Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we've got another hashtag WFH module sew along which stands for work from home module sew along. Um, the challenge that we're running on Instagram and don't forget we've got prizes now. Um, so we have got a $50 um, voucher basically for Screech Owl Fine Fabrics and also one month subscription to In a Haystack which is a digital sewing um, subscription pack um, that is it's a really cool idea and I have links to both those prizes down below if you'd like to go check that out I'm just going to be randomly choosing a winner from the hashtag just as long as you've got your six pieces or seven um, tagged by the um, midnight standard eastern standard time on october 31st um you can be entered to win that and again i'll just be randomly choosing one winner so um yeah so that's very exciting and kind of a change in um the original plan okay so we are going to be going through um my plans for my module and it is a seven piece module that i am doing because i like to throw one piece in there so um i talked a lot about my silhouettes that I was looking at and um, some patterns, which is basically what I'm using today, but, um, and then that was a week one. And then yes, last week I talked about fabrics and colors and how I chose those because I'm going to be just doing a very small module to take you through exactly how I'm doing that. Now, if you follow along with the channel, once this um, challenge is over, I'm gonna be building off of my module. So hopefully it'll be a way to show you that once you have, you know, a good core seven pieces, how you can then, um, cartwheel off of that basically um, just to have make all of your makes just a little bit more thoughtful and make sure that you've got a more cohesive closet and that the things that you make and spend so much time and resources on that they are all loved and um, well worn in your closet and they're all going to be winners but you know for as much as possible it's a it's a great way to do some planning for your sewing okay let's get started so fabric number one now I did purchase three fabrics for this um, also, if you are wanting to kind of take this challenge to the next level, um, Kate from Sewing From Scratch is doing a challenge, a um, shelf sewing September that I've talked a lot about. And she's got some fantastic prizes every week um, with some really great companies. So definitely have a look over there if you're wanting to just try and sew completely from your stash for this as well. I think that's a great, um, a great thing. And I wish I could have... <laughs> There were just a couple things that I, I had some holes in my closet that I wanted to fill. So I did buy three fabrics, but um, also fabric buying is a hobby of mine. So <laughs> I don't know. But I am using stuff for my stash as well. And as I do more sewing into the fall and winter, because I'm not just stopping with one module, you guys know me. Um, I'll just be doing that with this um, challenge. Uh, but yes, I'll definitely, I have a whole big pile of stuff from my stash that I'll be using. So that's my justification. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So my topper, I talked about one of the things with the work from home, I really wanted something oversized that would be easy to throw on. My basement gets cold. That is where my office is. That's where my kids' um, classroom basically is. Um, they're, they're at home doing school from home um, every other day. So when they are home, we are working in the uh, basement as well. And it does get chilly down here, especially as the temperature starts to drop. Uh, but I also wanted something, so something we could easily throw on over anything um, because we are working from home. We are home a lot more right now, but also something in the fall weather that I could easily go for walks with my husband. So if the, the weather's just a little bit nippier, something that I can just really easily throw on um, without having to pull a coat or a jacket on. So I have made before um, the Style Arc Como cardigan, and that's what I'm going to make for this one. Um, it's just a really slouchy cardigan, but it is so cozy and warm. Um, you know, it is oversized and technically with my um, soft classic aesthetic, uh, it's not very tailored, but um, I, I kind of like that every now and again, just to kind of go rogue. Um, and I just wanted something that was nice, like a blanket basically that I was going to wear. So, and I've made this before and it's in, I have a kind of a tie-dyed sweatshirting. I think it's like a French Terry sweatshirting type fabric that's beautiful. Um, but I wanted something solid for this one. And I actually grabbed this. This is a, um, oh... Hold on, let me grab the sheet and I'll tell you exactly what this is. <laughs> okay, I have the paper still here. So this is from the three fabrics I bought are all three from Stylemaker Fabrics. This is their Cozy Echo Sweatshirt, or Eco, not Echo. Cozy Eco Sweatshirt Fleece. 
and I got the um, olive colorway. Now I have used this before. My son's um, zip up hoodie that I made back in March where we chose the two, it's like a navy and a mustard color for the jacket I made for him. I used the same fabric just in obviously different colors and I love it. So it's not too heavy. It's a pretty, um, it's a lighter weight sweatshirt fleece and it's definitely fleecy on the one side. I went with olive because you know I said that my my um, color palette's kind of camels with some chocolate brown and then olive is kind of my pop of color at the moment. Although I, I'm gonna stray from that a little bit on one thing, but um, it does have stretch, but it's not, um, so my sweatshirting that I used for my other Como cardigan that I made is um, thicker. And so it is a way, I mean, it, it just looks a lot bigger because it is thicker. Um, this I think is gonna have a lot better drape. So I'm interested to see what this looks like when all is said and done, but it is still oversized so it can easily be thrown on over all the tops that I'm gonna be making. So that will be my topper. And I'm making all these pieces from scratch. Okay, let's go into the bottoms. Now I've got three fabrics here because I haven't really decided what I wanna do yet. Maybe you guys can help me out. <laughs> Okay, so the two patterns, um, there's two patterns that I wanna make. I wanna make a pair of pants and a pair and a skirt. So I'm gonna be doing the um, Untitled Thoughts Chandler pants. I love the idea of these in a wool and I definitely, um, you know, I've been pinning a lot of monochromatic type looks and so I really wanna play around with a lot of camel um, and real warm spicy tones in my um, fall wardrobe this year. Um, I'll be adding some purples, I think, and maybe some teals as we get into winter, but um, definitely wanna do some more of the warmer, spicier tones for, um, uh, for right now. And I love those, the Chandler pants. Um, I've not made them yet, very excited about that, but they've got elastic in the back. So they'll be super comfortable. So it's a nice way to wear a trouser um, that's not jeans, but still be very comfortable. So here's what I've pulled. Um, well, I'll talk about the second bottom I wanna make, and then I'll show you the three fabrics because I could use any of these three for both of those. Um, and then I'm also wanting to make the uh, closet Kate or closet core patterns fewer skirt. So while all the pictures um, show it to be a very summery skirt, it's one of their, um, she has like a sewing basics class that's on her, um, her uh, website. It's a class you can actually buy and she actually goes through sewing the whole Rome collection, which is the Cielo top and dress, the Fior skirt and the Pietra pants. Um, but and everything's made up in um, really more of um, linens and a little bit more summery. It was released, I think, in the in a summer, like a June, last June maybe, um, June 19 of 19. But I really love the idea of doing it in a wool, and I will line it um, if I do it in. Well, I will line it because I'm doing it in a wool. I have three wools sitting here, so. <laughs> and I'm gonna do the button down the front version, and I think I'm gonna make it a little bit longer to where it hits more midi length. Um, I think that it gives a little bit of a 70s vibe and I think that it could be a lot of fun to wear and comfortable because it's a loose skirt. Um, but I still will have the um, a little bit more fitted waistband, which I've been wearing a little bit more um, since I've had to cut sugar out. My waist is not fluctuating as badly, um, which basically means that sugar horribly inflames me, which is unfortunate for someone with a sweet tooth, but I digress. So here are the three fabrics I have and all three of these are from my stash, so yay. So this first one is a camel colored um, gabardine. This is really beautiful. Um, I would say, I mean, this one's a little bit scratchier. Like I would hesitate to do pants in this, I think. I, I would do the skirt because it was gonna be, it would be lined, um, just because it is a little scratchier. As a side note, I did just do that wool video, but if you're wondering if wool's gonna be really scratchy, if you rub it on the inside of your arm where you've got more sensitive skin or like on your neck, I mean, you don't want to get makeup on it. You don't want to be in the <laughs> fabric store getting makeup all over it. But you can kind of tell like how that's going to be on your more sensitive skin, if that's going to be too um, sensitive for you. Uh, but I have this gabardine that's one. I love this color. This is definitely the color that I'm going for. So that's one option. Maybe not the pants, um, but possibly for the skirt. Now this one could go for either. This is a worsted um, suiting fabric, so it is very soft. So it could be um, lined very easily or it can definitely go unlined. Um, it is kind of a men's uh, inspired, um, I can never remember the name of this plaid. Is it Prince of Wales plaid, Glen plaid? I can never remember, but anyway. It's chocolate and camel, and then it has a very pale blue line in there. It is super soft, I mean it is, really nice. I actually got this from S.R. Harris when I was in Minnesota um, for a sewing conference, I don't know, like five years ago now, maybe four years ago. Um, that place is a ma magical. I really want to get back 
to Minneapolis at some point <laughs> just to go to SR Harris. But um, yes, I'm. this is beautiful and I've been waiting for, I bought it with the intention of making pants or possibly a skirt with it. It's a very masculine print, which I even like even better. I think that that's gonna be really fun to make more feminine um, in either the pants or the skirt. So there's that one. And it's a plaid, which gives us a little bit I'm very much on the solids with this. So this might be kind of fun to mix things up a little. And then the third one I have is a wool crepe that is um, right here. That's also in this camel. Um, I mean, I could definitely do the pants in this. I've even thought about, you know, maybe if I did the pants, even in the gabardine, um, and did it like men's pants where they just have the lining that hits like mid-thigh and then it's pinked. Um, just to help with, you know, it rubbing and those are kind of the areas that it would, that it would be maybe itchier. Um, but I don't know. I just worry about lining being in the back with the elastic, that it will be too bulky. Um, I think all of these would be fine with the elastic because they're, they're thin fabrics, but I do worry about it being a little bulky. So I don't know. The pants may become the plaid and then I could do the skirt in one of these, but it's, it's almost the same color as the gabardine. There's a little bit of difference. Um, not much. <laughs> but this is a crepe and this is a gabardine, so this has a little bit more texture. So let me know what you think. I will not use one of those, at least at this, like right now, for this module. Okay, so those are my bottoms. Next up are my tops, and I purchased two of these fabrics as well. Um, we'll do those last though. So the first thing, I've got this beautiful, you guys have seen this already, my Antrim dress from um, Itch to Stitch I sewed up. So this is a rayon rib knit and I um, got it at Zinx, that fabric haul. And it's such an unusual color that I bought the entire rest of the bolt. I think I got six yards of it and it was in their clearance area. And so if you bought the rest of the bolt, you got an additional percentage off. I think I paid $1.74 a yard for all six yards. I mean, per yard. So like less than ten dollars for six yards basically um or no probably right around probably right around ten ten dollars ish <laughs> i can do the math right now anyway it feels phenomenal i love this color it is a fantastic it almost matches my hair it's a fantastic um fabric and so i want to do my loose fitting turtleneck out of this now i had originally said the monroe from tasuti which is actually a free pattern that i wanted to try um, but i had some people that said that they also had larger bust lines and that it was really too boxy on them which is giving me a little bit of pause not so much i mean it's a free pattern so you're not really out anything i just and this was very inexpensive fabric but i just love the color so much i'm like well i don't want to waste this but then again, I also have a ton of it, you know, like, I don't know if I'm going to do that or if I don't do the Monroe, I'm thinking also of the um, So House 7 toaster sweater. Everyone made that back, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago, now, maybe the beginning of 20, 2018. It was a So My Style pattern, I think, and everyone looks fantastic in it. And there's two versions of it. One's a little bit boxier and one's a little bit more fitted, but both of them are still a boxy cardigan sweater. So... I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I try the free pattern or should I buy the Sew House 7? I would like the toaster sweater. I've been wanting it forever and I probably am going to end up buying it anyway because I think I would like to try that pattern no matter what I do with this. But what do you think for that pattern? Should we go with the Monroe or, um, cause I have it, it's free. Um, and actually I already have it printed off. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just nervous. I'm nervous. It's going to be too boxy because it is a very loose and flowy, sweatshirt or a sweater turtleneck sweater which is what I'm wanting and this is a very drapey fabric so maybe it wouldn't be as boxy it does have a fitted sleeve on it the Monroe does I don't know what do you guys think but that's top number one some sort of a loose turtleneck sweater god I just love that color so much all right and then I purchased these last two also from style maker fabrics so I would mentioned um of doing a um chocolate like silk charmeuse button down shirt I may still do that I just I don't I didn't have money in the budget right now for silk charmeuse um, I don't have any chocolate brown silk charmeuse um, I would love to look for some and at some point buy some um, but I decided well next best thing let's look for a beautiful rayon and I found this gorgeous chocolate rayon um, from 
style maker and it is textured so can you see the texture in there it's already been washed and dried and it just feels lovely and i think that this would make i'm gonna do the classic shirt by liesl and co um, it has cup sizes i'm very excited to try that out but i think that this might be um, a nice alternative to a cotton button down shirt because this is a very dry rayon it's not a super super drapey one but drapier than a cotton would be so i think it's not going to be very hard to sew with um you know, be pretty easy in that vein. But I think that, I mean, it could get worn with so many things. And I've pinned a ton of like chocolate brown button down shirts, button up shirts that, um, I mean, most of them are in a silk. And one day, you know, I just need to keep my eye out um, to find some uh, chocolate brown silk or even any kind of warm brown um, silk. This is a little bit cooler brown, but it's still, I don't have my colors next to me, but this is, this is a, um, one that goes well with my colors. It's a good dark neutral for me. So this will go the mile in my wardrobe. I mean, just a dark buttoned up shirt. I mean, how can you go wrong? And then this one just caught my eye when I was looking for the sweatshirt fleece um, for my cardigan and then looking for something for a button up shirt. And I was like, oh my gosh, this needs to be the Mimi Woven Blouse. So I'm going to be doing the Mimi Woven Blouse, um, also by Style Arc. I love the shearing detail on the sleeve. This is a little bit looser, so I think it'll be nice and comfortable. Um, I think it's going to look great layered and very excited about this one. And this is called, oh, the textured rayon I just showed you is called Textured Rayon Blend Shirting Chocolate. So, um, oh, it's a rayon blend. I wonder what else is in there. Anyway. <laughs> I'm sure I looked at it at one point. So that's what um, the brown, the chocolate one was. And this last one is called Prowling Jaguar Jungle Twall Rayon White and Sage. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It was the print. I was like, it just grabbed me. And it's like all of my colors. I want to make sure that this is... Oh, look! Look at the leopards. It's leopards, right? Nope, jaguars. Jaguars. Isn't that just phenomenal? So all of this is a really dark green. It's not showing, it's almost showing up black, but it's not. It's like a really dark green. And then you've got your olives and um, it's not a stark white background. It's a little bit softer white background. And then you've got like the um, kind of mustardy, camely colored leopards that are, or jaguars that are on there. Isn't that fantastic? I just love it. And it's like a rayon poplin. So it's um, a little thicker than a chalet. Um, so I think it's going to be perfect, but still like super drapey um, for that Mimi woven blouse. Because I think that Mimi blouse needs to be, needs to have some drape. It's a nice drop shoulder and stuff, so I need the drape in there. So this was kind of my fun um, mix it up type print. And I just can't wait to, I'm so excited about this one. So that one kind of jumped into my bag as well. And I ordered two yards of all three of those. So that should be perfect for everything um, that I am needing to make. Usually I can get a, a good blouse out of two yards is enough. All right. And for my seventh piece, I am going to be making the um, Mila Dungarees by Tilly and the Buttons. I already have this pattern and have it printed off. And I'm using fabric from my stash. And I thought about, I was looking for a nice um, chocolate stretch denim because this is a stretch pattern. Um, cause I thought that would be just amazing. I couldn't, I could find chocolate denim, um, just nothing with stretch in it. So, um, which I, I, I realized was like not a typical fabric. So that would, might be kind of hard to find. I did find a stretch twill, but sometimes with skinny jeans, if it's not a denim, it, it just, you can see a lot of the, um, like it's just not thick enough to like really suck you in really well. And sometimes it just doesn't look as good. Um, you know, I've, been burned by making skinny jeans out of stuff that's not denim, stretch denim, like more of a stretch bottom weight still, but when you get real tight in a skinny jean, sometimes that it can backfire. <laughs> so um, I'm going with just a denim from my stash and I realize there's not any blue that's necessarily in my um, palette, but it's denim. It's, it's, almost, it's a neutral. It's, you know, it goes with everything. And um, everything that I was pinning was more denim overalls. Anyway, the skinny denim overalls, I had this in my stash. I think this is Cone Mills denim. I think I bought like four yards of this when Blackbird Fabrics, like a, lo a long time ago, when Blackbird Fabrics was having a um, Cone Mills sale. 
Silicone, it's just a type of stretch denim. Um, obviously, you can use any stretch denim. I've actually been very happy with the stretch denim I got from Zinx that I've been making my daughter's jeans out of. I just don't have enough for myself. Um, just it's not enough for her. <laughs> but when I make it back up there, I will definitely be buying more of their stretch denim for the stash. But yeah, just going to use a nice dark uh, denim um, from my stash for those overalls. And I'm very excited about playing around with that. Um, it's a silhouette that I just haven't done yet. So I'm very excited about playing around with some overalls. And I think the skinny overalls will be a fun way to start and then maybe go into more of a looser fit um, overall as we go into the fall a little bit more. Okay, so that is it for my module, for my seven piece module. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna be stopping here for my fall sewing. This is just what we're doing for the, the challenge. So if there's anything that I kind of mentioned making that you haven't seen here yet, that probably is coming. And I'll still be doing the sew the looks and I still have a couple more left over from summer that'll be coming that can kind of easily, seamlessly slide into um, this wardrobe as well. Now, while we're talking about it, and I'm gonna get more into, I'm gonna do a video actually about um, I haven't decided where it's going to fall in this challenge, but I want to talk about bringing in things that you already own as well. And so this may actually come at the end of the challenge, but um, I, I want to talk about, you know, thrifting and how I go about thrifting. Um, well, maybe that wouldn't make sense. This may actually be two different videos. We'll see. <laughs> but I do want to talk about um, how to, th you know, thoughtfully adding in some purchases, whether that be thrifted items, things that you can like make a list of to decide what you want to try and thrift, um, as well as uh, footwear. So I thrift some footwear, not a lot, but some, and then um, also making thoughtful new purchases of footwear as well. Um, different shoes, which I have done and gotten some really good prices and um, but still buying things that I really wanted that were things that were on my list, which makes shopping a sale much more economical, much more sustainable um, if you go in knowing what you want. So then it actually is a good deal. It's not just buying something because it's a good deal and then it not working in your wardrobe or being something you necessarily need. So there's definitely, we'll be talking a little bit more about that as well. But I also wanted to throw in, I've been knitting quite a bit and I have two sweaters that I'm doing working on this um, fall. Well, one actually I finished last night, but um, a second one. So I wanted to, those are going to be thrown into this as well, because I think with all of our crafts that um, we wear, basically, it's nice to be thoughtful about all of those because we put so much time and resources into those things that we want them to be things that we absolutely love. And I know firsthand how devastating it can be to spend so much time knitting a sweater, especially, and then it just not working out or working <laughs> your wardrobe and there I mean good yarn can be expensive and you need so much for a sweater and um yes and then so much time I am it takes me forever to make a sweater I'm not one of these that can whip one out super quickly but um yeah it's important to be thoughtful about those kind of pro um, product processes as well so the first one the one I just finished last night um did I bring all that I did is the soundtrack sweater by uh, Olive Knits. And I um, think I sh I've shared a little bit of the process of this, but I'm using the body of the sweater and you'll see it, I'll show it to you. Um, it needs to be blocked, but I will definitely be showing it to you. Is in this burnt orange, um, it's a variegated, I mean, it's got a lot of, it's not like a flat color. You can kind of see it's got a lot of, almost tweedy a little bit, um, but this beautiful burnt orange color. And then I used this um, also kind of tweedy, not all the colors were tweedy though, that were of this yarn, um, in this beautiful purple for the accents, for the actual little um, soundtrack things around the top. Uh, just a beautiful, it's made a beautiful sweater. And this wool that I used is Patagonia Organic Merino. Um, let's see, it is, the color, oh, the orange is called cinnamon. I'm not sure what this color is called because I didn't grab that one. 100% um, wool, it's merino. Um, it was very reasonably priced. It was $15 for a skein, and I was able to get the entire sweater out of, well, I bought four skeins total. So I got one in the contrasting color, which obviously I have a ton left, and then I almost could have gotten away with just two skeins for the orange. I used, I ran out right at the ribbing of um, my last sleeve. So I know I could have shortened the body maybe just enough, but um, I basically have a whole nother skein left. Um, so I think this is going to be a hat of some sort or maybe a hat and mittens. I don't know because I have plenty of both of these because uh, hardly any of this was used and really hardly any of this was used. 
and I love those colors together so that may be coming back in as accessories but that sweater um, has been knit and then I really wanted my daughter has a um, cardigan from Old Navy of all places it's kind of an oversized but shorter cardigan and it's got really big buttons on the front and I loved it and I really wanted to create something um, for myself in that and Okay, and then the second one, the um, I actually just swatched this last night, um, but this is was yarn that was gifted to me um, by Chris. So thank you, Chris. I'm very excited to get this on my needles. This um, she had won this yarn in a giveaway, and um, it's a obviously a very much a warm brown. Um, and she just said no one in her family wears this. It's not a good color brown on anyone. So she's like, but it is your brown. And yes, this is my brown. I'm so excited. This is going to make a fantastic cardigan. Um, so this is a Shibui. Am I saying that right? It's a Merino alpaca blend. Um, and I think that they don't have, it's an out of, an out of, not out of print. It's an out of, they don't manufacture this specific kind anymore. Shibui does not. Um, I'm probably totally butchering their name too, by the way. Um, but it's 50% baby alpaca and 50% merino. Um, anyway, she sent me a whole bunch of this. And I think I have just enough to do the, um, it's a new to me knitting designer. Um, Lily Kate France is her, um, is her name. I don't know if France is her last name. She's a UK knitter knit designer, knitwear designer, <laughs> and um, has some really cool, very contemporary looking patterns. And I bought her Be Thankful cardigan and I'm gonna pop it up here. And it's almost an exact dupe for what my um, daughter has from Old Navy that I want. And I, like I said, I swatched this last night and I'm so excited. I went ahead and blocked it and everything. It's got a beautiful, the alpaca gives it a nice beautiful drape. It's so soft. I actually love to swatch things. I know that it can be annoying when you just want to cast on your sweater or whatever, but I love doing a swatch because it's like instant gratification of what that fabric's going to look like when you're finished. I just, I love swatching because it gets me so excited to start um, knitting the sweater. So that is what this is going to be. A nice little cardigan for the fall as well, which would be perfect for in the house. Um, but I like that it's a little bit cropped so I can wear it over my new shirt dress, for instance, which is the Sew Along shirt dress. Um, you guys will be seeing in a few weeks in its finished form, but um, yes. I'm very excited about making that up. So that is what is going on my needles next. Um, I have another sweater that I'm like partially through that is going to be pretty cool, but I'm going to wait. That's, it's a teal color, which I think is a color I'm going to bring into my winter wardrobe more. So that may, you know, when I'm finished with this cardigan, I can get back to work on that sweater uh, next. Okay, that's all I've got for today, guys. So let me know what your plans are. Are you guys starting to make some solid, more solid plans? Um, yeah. Oh, and I was gonna, yes, I'm gonna also show you uh, next week. Um, I think next week I'm gonna talk about thrifting and um, adding things in that way and also about ready to wear. And then at the very end, then I'll talk about more about adding things that are already currently in your closet to then stretch your module. So next week we're gonna talk about that and I'm gonna show you my, my body model um, sketches that I've done, my little croquis that I've done, which has been so much fun. Um, I'm not quite finished with them yet. So um, um, yeah, I'll show them to you um, next week because it's just a lot of fun, a really fun way to plan, especially if you're a visual person, which I am I'm just having a lot of fun with that. All right, that's all I've got for today. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday and I will see you all tomorrow in the weekly vlog and then on Friday. Have a good one. Bye.